All right, hello everyone. This is Crota giving you game three in a or g game three, yeah, game three in a series between Axlav and Root Ruby here on Lost Temple. Here we have EG Axlav spawning as the blue Protoss player at the twelve o'clock position, and all the way across the map we have Root Ruby spawning here as the Red Terran. Now I've been trying to follow these games as closely as possible and trying to remember all the matchups, and I think Axlav has really surprised me. In his in his gameplay, he beat Jinro, another Terran player, on Lost Temple as well. So Jinro, uh, one of the most recognized quote unquote foreigners to the StarCraft 2 scene, and we'll see if he will be able to transition into a very very strong gameplay against um, Druby as well. So things may turn out really really well. I don't think anyone has won all of their matches, um, all four of their matches yet, but Axlav may be able to do it. We now see Axlav pretty much doing a standard build so far. Should be getting a 13 gateway followed, uh, or sorry, a 12 or 13 gateway followed by an assimilator. Meanwhile, back over here, Root Ruby setting up that one supply depot very close to the mineral patch and now getting that barracks up and running. Um, very important for the supply depot to be built relatively closely as that SCB wants to return to mining as quickly as possible. Normally, I think the timing allows that SCB as soon as it's done building to mine one trip and then go back out once again allowing for an additional five extra minerals and every mineral in the early portion of this game really starts to add up we now see both sides are scouting out and um, so both sides will reveal that it is going to be cross spawns in just a moment and that promises to be a very a very very long game on lost temple i don't see any proxy barracks proxy gateways being set up anywhere across the map so it's not going to be very very heavy rushes a command center now upgrading to an orbital command a marine now being trained off of this one barracks over here as we should be getting the cybernetics core there's that cybernetics core and now as soon as that cybernetics core, core is done we will most likely be getting a stalker underway we should be getting a marine now coming out yes and a marine is already on the move we now see a second barracks being trained so a very very interesting root ruby opting to go for a two racks build instead and we should also see a tech lab being placed down followed by a reactor it is very important that um, early terrans get marines and marauders marines are there to counter void rays and immortals marauders are there to counter the gateway units scv now just wandering around on the inside still we are training up one relatively early zealot and now we are not getting cyber or the cyber next core finally getting that warp gate research no chrono boost on any of those buildings just quite yet as the scv is now trying to return home two marines now sitting in the center um, of this um what i guess is the lost temple whatever the lost temple is here and now we see those marines now trying to chase that back this probe the probe now wandering away once again and will be able to escape probe able to move a little bit more quickly than those marines there is also one zealot guarding the front door here and now we are going into reapers so a reaper fast expand may be coming in in just a moment it looks as though yeah reaper is now being trained in addition to a reactor so we may be trying to, he may be trying to get what i call map control with that one reaper and with that one reaper um able to get map control and then perhaps try to push back any attacking units like those early zealots but it does not seem to be a command center anytime soon it is not taking to a factory yet just going for marauders and marauders and marines having a reaper move along the field now it looks as though yes a sentry and a zealot will be ready to greet that reaper that reaper doesn't stand a chance if it tries to walk up that ramp and there it goes walking up the ramp now trying to run away zealots and sentries are going to get some damage there and now coming around that backside the reaper does take three shots in order to take down a probe so those probes have not been taken down yet needs to at least focus down and get one probe there we go now gets at least one probe and now the sentry doing that move attack ability that you most commonly see on marines and now the reaper will be able to jump away stay on that high ground zealots and sentries perhaps trying to look for that one reaper doesn't know exactly where it is that reaper will be able to stay there does have two hit points and just sitting there right now um, nexus already coming in does the reaper have sight on it i believe so yes does see that the nexus is currently being warped in there and now out moves an observer from axlab so axlab will be able to gain sight onto that reaper reaper doesn't stand a chance there it goes and now that scouting reaper has been taken care of we now see a large army of marines and marauders on the move we now also see that command center that i was talking about being built over here will be lifted off and placed down in just a moment 
uh, one scouting probe was taken down very very easily and now Drewby deciding not to press with this marine and marauder army realizing that it was revealed very very early there are a lot of sentries coming in from axlab so axlab doing the zealot sentry build in order to be able to get a lot of um, save up on minerals and then do this e expansion over here also observers costing less gas allows for these sent more sentries to be trained up as one observer is going to be very very in trouble as it gets oh it takes one missile attack and now it looks like the, that observer will be able to escape one observer one missile turret on the high ground always very important prevents any observers from being able to give sight onto your siege tanks here it also allows you to get detection onto the low ground against any cloaked units such as burrowed roaches or in this uh, matchup um, dark templars we now see excuse me we um, currently getting that warp gate research trying to chrono boost trying to um, just get more and more units out of there and this is very interesting that axlab is sitting on so many sentries uh, the sentry play really um really really um, strengthens gateway units by being able to split up marines and marauders. Um, I believe there are a couple indicators or a couple replays that show um, that marauders are just so strong against gateway units. They have decent armor, fast attack rate, and they deal a lot of damage towards stalkers and zealots. And because they are only melee, they don't seem to fight very well against marauders unless they're able to surround them. And now um, Druby has been a combination of Marines and Marauders. The Marines are there to deal damage toward the Zealots. And then the Marauders are there to deal damage towards those Stalkers with that additional plus one range. One probe over here should be trying to run away. There it goes, is running away now. And sh now still sitting there. Oh, quickly getting shot down there. And now we see a lot of sentries. So with this many sentries, with what, eight sentries, that is a lot of force fields. And he will be able to guard this ram for quite some time and delay any serious pushes that try to come in with this army. And we should be having a battle sometime soon, a scanner sweep revealing what um, Druby doesn't want to see, a very, very large force field and uh, uh, focused army. And there you go, so many force fields are brought into play. And now one Marine now quickly getting taken down and now just doing a great job, just trying to make sure that none of those units are able to come in and more units have been just picked apart. And wow, just massive number of force fields. Those force fields so powerful completely cleaning up that army just goes to show you how powerful those um, sentries are in being able to deal that damage really really well placed force fields um someone was saying and um, where are we going to get our force field magic without white raw it looks like axe lab is dude, with those beautiful force fields able to just eat apart that army and now druby is in trouble and we now see that druby is taking the opportunity to try to set up another expansion here but there is now a warp prism so a warp prism may be able to start warping in some additional units and now getting a lot of damage and denying this expansion over here this is going to be a very very problematic for druby as druby is now only essentially able to mine off of um five or six mineral patches if scvs wander their way over here they will start taking damage marines and marauders trying to clear out these golden minerals um, over here by destroying these destructible rocks and now we also see axe slab on the move setting up some additional bases over here he will be taking a third base but it is not the gold mineral patch, which most likely Druby will scan later on to see if he is ahead in the mineral count. Missile turret now being dropped down as well, and, and that one observer should get the heck out of there. It it will be taking some damage in just a moment, but still, Stalker is doing a great job denying this expansion over here. Another SCV has been taken down. Marauders and Marines will be coming in in just a moment, and now those Stalkers need to pull away. They if, Oh, no micro here at all. Those Marauders are going to be able to finish off that Stalker very, very easily. And now, with only one Warp Prism here, that Warp Prism should be able to um, just cause more reinforcements and cause more troubles in just a moment. Stalkers now moving in with Zealots. Zealots do not have the charge upgrade. And now, it's going to be a battle for the center for positioning. Zealots quickly taking down that one um, that one missile turret. And now, Marines and Marauders and SCVs going to go ahead and battle it out. SCVs soaking up much of that damage. More force fields coming in. But that force fields were nowhere near as effective as the original force fields that we saw earlier. Sentries now being forced to pull back here. SCVs going to win out on this fight here. And now, Axe Lab on the receiving end of a very, very horrible um, battle. 
losing many of his units. Those force fields didn't come down early enough. He didn't block the SCVs. If he had come in a little bit sooner and then stopped the attack, it may have worked out, but this was already a planetary fortress. So as a planetary fortress dealing 40 damage splash per attack, that is a lot of damage to deal with. The Viking has cleaned up that one warp prism there, and there is no more threat of any um, drop or any harassment onto the natural expansion for Druby. Production wise, we now see the ground or, or ground two um, armor, and now um, I believe the level two weapons upgrade in addition to stalker blink. So, we are going to get a lot more gateways in just a moment. Also, chrono boosting off of two forge, and that is a lot of gateways. This is going to be eight gate play off of zealots, sentries. And what I assume to be stalkers, we already have the Templar archives now coming in as well. Um, Zealot legs has been upgraded, and now we also should be getting stalker blink in just about another minute or so. But there are not that many stalkers in the field. An armory now being produced, most likely to get for additional um, additional research on the engineering base, and perhaps to try to go for um, a Thor later on. But I do not think that is going to be the case. One photon cannon here will be able to shoo away that Viking. The Viking, however, going to land on that high ground and do exactly what those stalkers were doing earlier and now trying to get even more kills will be able to get more kills onto those probes over there already getting three kills will it get up to four or five and make it worth its minerals and the viking already getting plenty of kills there it looks like that, that probe is shot down once again the viking should jump into the air however there, there's that VTOL able to take off and live to fight another day Druby does know about this expansion now, obviously, and now with another pylon currently being warped in here, he, um, we know that Axlab will be able to deploy reinforcements, and now you see the Viking perhaps going to land on the other side of the cliff and get more damage in there as well. That Viking um, already has five kills, already has proved it's worth taking on an early warp prism, and now four more probes, and now trying to get even more probes. It looks like another probe may get taken down. No, Stalkers with Stalker Blink going to be able to shoot down that Viking, and down it goes. Back over here, and we grew Druby trying to set up an expansion or set up a very, very strong front door. And um, however, he doesn't have any siege tanks, and this is not going to um, bode well for Druby. We already see the Templar archives coming on. I'm um, sorry, the Templar archives researching that Cyanic Storm. Um, Cyanic Storm is nearly completed. We have a two high Templars sitting over here, and now we have a very, very large army movement of Marines and Marauders. One, one upgraded Zealots now charging in. Stalkers now quickly blinking in as well. Force fields block off many of the retreat there but in comes a drop on this side and Axlab needs to move down with those mar marauders to try to snipe down this nexus the stalkers now trying to deal some damage stalkers now blinking up onto that high ground getting some damage onto the medevacs the medevacs have been shot down or one of them have been shot down the marauders trying to get some additional distance but those stalkers with stalker blink doing such a great job cleaning up many of um, those st uh, what the stalkers with stalkers blink cleaning up the medevacs and then the zealots with zealot charge cleaning up the marauders so nicely done and now we are going into level three ground armor um, upgrades and level three uh, weapons upgrade and this is going to become very very important w the combination of the guardian shield and the um, and the um, protoss ground armor will give stalkers a base armor of I believe six so those marines when they're trying to attack will only be dealing one damage per attack and until that level two weapons upgrade and then they'll be doing a hundred percent more damage at two damage an attack but that's really not that much the marauders um, are going to build up a little bit more a little bit well as well but the but the zealots are going to really be very difficult to deal with as marauders attack much more slowly than those marines oh in come ghost ghost now going after some sniping units there and was able to get some emp shockwaves in there and now trying to go after more of those very very low hit point very very critical um zealot units and now we see the ghost trying to retreat the ghost should just be able to turn around take down that zealot ghosts are able to deal 22 damage per attack there nicely done and now um even though it was a very very small tactical battle it really bode well for Druby in that particular instance just because he was able to clean up many of those high Templars army wise both sides are pretty even so far and now Druby getting more and more bunkers I'm surprised that he hasn't gotten the armor upgrade just quite yet and now we see another drop coming in Marauders now coming in as well but there are a lot of photon cannons here in order to try to deal with and now, um, photon cannons getting some damage trying to take down more of those units zealots and stalkers now trying to warp in as well it looks as though yes what three ghosts quickly taken down there was perhaps an observer or not enough and Energy there and a size storm now coming in so a lot of damage being dealt across the board across multiple marauders and nicely done so axe lab does have that level 
the amulet research and those high templars with three armor are also much more difficult to take down as well back over here observer is doing more scouting and taking a look at the economy both sides running off of very very large economies missile turret quickly and taking down an observer there we now see uh, what zealots stalkers and sentries once again on the move a guardian shield needs to be activated in order to fight back over here no guardian shield not quite sure why as the ghosts are now coming in over here so a very very nice flanking attack and a emp shockwaves pretty much trying to hit more of those units not really working out and more size storm coming in druby being forced to retreat and now, wow, just a very, very strong positioning move there. One Stalker now trying to come in. There are a couple of these um, uh, Ghosts here. The Ghosts do not deal any extra damage, but there is no Observer nearby. And now those Archons do move a little bit more quickly than, um, than, uh, excuse me, than those High Templars. Actually, much more quickly. Druby needs to pull back with those Ghosts. Those Ghosts are not going to stand a chance against those Archons. Archons dealing 47 damage per attack. And also, we are now getting the shield upgrades and also going for the air upgrades as well. So we may even get into carriers. So carriers, void rays are in the realm of possibility as those Archons are now moving out to try to deal damage over here. Has to be careful. Zealots now on the move once again as another drop coming in over here. So there was some warp prism warping in some units. High Templars were able to get some kills off and now taking down some of those units. I, I believe he actually took down his own stalker there. Not quite sure what that was about. EMP Shockwave re reducing the amount of energy. Ghost, a lot of ghosts dealing a lot of damage towards those light units, those zealots and those um, zealots and some other units. But now even more army now coming in. So running off of eight gateways, able to just continue to produce more and more units. An attack over here. Also a, the major army over here trying to clean up, making sure that Druby is unable to really set up any true expansions and more units are still being warped in. Zealots on the move once again and now we have High Templars joining in on this fight. So Axav should be ill. EMP Shockwave depleting all the energy. Archons and Zealots once again trying to be remerged. Marauders going to be able to take down that one Archon very easily but in comes another High Templar. High Templar getting another EMP Shockwave so that one High Templar didn't get anything off but it doesn't matter as the main base now getting attacked over here. The Planetary Fortress was taken down very easily. Archon now trying to get within combat range unable to. Very very shallow range there. EMP Shockwave depleting 100 shields across the board. Marauders and Marines trying to jump into to those bunkers trying to stay alive doesn't look like they will be able to as they're just fighting out of range more units coming back over here so druby uh, just taking a beating from axlab axlab putting on a lot of pressure and now um, it looks as though axlab has a smaller army but in production we currently see three carriers so carriers are being produced level two shield upgrades are being completed level two um, air armor or air weapons and air armor as well with the graviton catapult so both sides just fighting both sides doing so much damage only a couple mineral patches left over there at the natural expansion zealots now making their way over to try to clean up the rest of those marauders marauders are strong against so many of those gateway units but marauders well and just completely um, fall apart and now root ruby says well this was like the worst game ever um i don't know it was pretty entertaining um axlav um, I don't know why he apologized. I mean, Axlav just played a really, really strong game. He didn't go for Mass Colossi using those um, High Templars, getting uh, you know, getting another EMP Shockwave, forcing them to turn into Archons once again. But once those carriers arrive and those Marines, even though they are upgraded, um, upgraded to two two, are gonna have to deal with the upgraded Protoss shields and the upgraded Protoss air armor and weapons upgrade of um, those carriers. And now those War Prism will finally get cleaned up in just a moment. No not cleaned up as more feedback hitting the rest of those medevacs and there's the gg so really well played by axlav axlav doing a more than the hat trick hat trick plus one i believe in winning all of his games and this was just really really impressive play um yeah, just really impressive Protoss play. Those carriers have arrived. Where are those carriers? The carriers are back over here. Um, the carriers would have just completely changed the game, uh, gameplay, and the pacing and the setting. We saw a lot of barracks being used. So Druby, very very vulnerable to Psystorm. He did do a great job with Ghost, minimizing the amount of damage that that Psystorm was able to deal. But um, really, without any siege tanks, without any Thors trying to just be able to soak up a lot of that damage, especially with almost fully upgraded Archons. Yeah, those Archons are dealing 47 damage per attack. Um, some players, some people think that Archons still need that massive upgrade. Um, if they were massive, they, would, they wouldn't be slowed down by Concussive Shell. 
and then but they would also take additional damage from void rays so i'm not quite sure but yeah those archons didn't really weren't really able to deal that much damage against those marauders but um, when those archons against those marines are just able to rip them apart yeah a really well played game i really liked what i saw from axlav and that really was a yeah, so thanks for watching, thanks for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed this Protoss versus Terran beatdown here on Lost Temple.